Most people believe in God and believe they are doing their best to live a decent life. So why do we need a church? Besides, with all the different types of churches and religions, it's just so confusing to figure out where to go. Most people don't really have anything against church. Churches do some good things. They help organize people when a disaster strikes. They do charitable projects. A lot of good people go to church and churches try to help people live a decent and honest life. But you don't have to go to church to be a decent person. Maybe your life is just so busy you just don't have time for church. Sundays are the only day you can sleep in. Maybe you feel you are helping others in your own way. You volunteer for lots of school or community activities. You don't need a church to tell you how to help other people. Maybe your life is just so complicated that you really have to focus on yourself right now. You have issues and problems you really need to deal with, and joining a church would just complicate your life even more. Maybe you're just one of those people who don't believe the church has anything to offer to you. You have your own ideas about God. You pray to Him regularly and just don't think any one person or institution has the right to tell you how you should live your life or how you should worship God. But what if there was a church where the primary focus wasn't how you should live your life? What if there was a church where the main emphasis was not telling you how you should worship God? Does that sound interesting? In the Lutheran Church, we have a unique way of referring to our Sunday morning gathering. We refer to them as the divine service. You might think that the term divine service refers to how we can serve God. However, in the Lutheran Church, that term has nothing to do with how we serve God. The phrase divine service is understood by Lutherans not as a time for Christians to gather to serve God, but as a time to gather to be served by God. The emphasis of attendance at church is not what you can do for God, but what God can do for you. Not how you can serve Him, but how He can serve you. So what can God do for you? What can God do for you through those things that are unique to church life? Like hearing the preaching and teaching of scripture with fellow Christians, like receiving the Lord's Supper or the sacrament of baptism? What can God give to you through the church that you can't get and won't get anyplace else? Before we answer that question, take a moment and ponder another question. Is there some way in which you could describe yourself as absolutely perfect. Take about 10 seconds to ponder. Are you in any way absolutely perfect? Time's up. You probably answered the previous question with no. Over 90% of all people give that same answer, including many Christians who go to church every Sunday. Our culture teaches us to answer no to that question. In fact, a rather common phrase, especially when you realize you just made a mistake, is nobody is perfect. The world is focused on our imperfections. The nightly news is focused on what's wrong with the world and what's wrong with the government, what's wrong with the economy, what's wrong with you. Every time you see something being advertised, someone is telling you that your life is incomplete because you don't have the brightest teeth, the fanciest car, the latest fashion, or the latest electronic gadget. You eat too much. 
You don't eat the right things. You drink too much. You don't exercise enough. You don't have the right gadgets to exercise. Your skin isn't soft enough. Your hair isn't the right color. Not one part of your life is absolutely perfect. This is the message the world delivers to you each and every day. It is not a message that builds you up. It's a message that tears you down. But how would your life change if you saw yourself as perfect and flawless? How would your life be different if you were always focused on your successes rather than failures, your strong points rather than your flaws? Even secular research tells us that the difference in people who are focused on their strengths has a profound impact. For instance, in a best-selling book entitled Strengths-Based Leadership, Authors Tom Rath and Barry Conchie, experts in leadership research, found that the most effective leaders are always focused on strengths. They found that when an organization's leadership fails to focus on individual strengths, the number of employees who feel strongly engaged in their work is a dismal 1 in 11. But when an organization's leadership focuses on individual strengths, the number of employees strongly engaged in their work soars to three out of every four. When you wake up in the morning and look in the mirror, do you say to yourself, I am perfectly beautiful? Or do you focus on your flaws and imperfections? Many people only see their imperfections. They spend their mental energy comparing themselves with the unrealistic images from television and other media. They punish themselves because they don't measure up to the idea of beauty that our culture promotes. Disorders such as anorexia and bulimia are unfortunately commonplace in our society. They often afflict people who our culture would say are more beautiful than average. However, the people who suffer from these disorders can't see themselves as beautiful. They punish their bodies every day to the point of disfigurement, hoping to obtain some ideal image of perfection. How you see yourself has a powerful effect on the way you live your life. If you could in some way describe yourself as absolutely perfect, that belief would have a powerful effect on you. The world, however, is never going to tell you that. After all, according to the world, nobody is perfect. The Church of Jesus Christ has a different message for you. You can, in some way, describe yourself as perfect. Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for every sin you have ever committed, past, present, and future. The Bible states in 1 John 1 verse 7, The blood of Jesus his Son purifies us from all sin. We teach and confess what the Apostle Paul tells us in Colossians 1 verse 28. We proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. To make us even more certain of this truth, Jesus gave us the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper. Some churches look upon baptism as a way of showing God that you are committed to Him. In the Lutheran Church, however, we believe that Scripture teaches something very different about baptism. Baptism isn't something you do to prove your commitment to God. Baptism is something God does to assure you of his commitment and his gifts to you. It is a means by which he reassures you as an individual, soul and body, that what Jesus did on the cross some 2,000 years ago was meant for you personally. When the Apostle Paul became a believer, as described in Acts chapter 22, he was immediately told, Be baptized 
and wash your sins away. When the apostles were preaching in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, and informed the crowds that had gathered that the Son of God had been crucified, everyone was convinced they were doomed. They contemplated God's severe judgment upon themselves, for they had allowed God's only Son to be murdered. In Acts chapter 2, the crowds cry out to the apostles, What shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Isn't that an amazing message? That the killing of God's Son and all other sins would be forgiven by simply repenting and being baptized. The world and perhaps our own logic and reason would say, that's too simple. The world wants you to believe that the problems of life are complicated and difficult to solve. When the church is clearly and faithfully speaking God's truth, revealed in Jesus Christ and recorded in the scripture, the message he wants you to receive is simple and uncomplicated. You have been made perfect in the blood of Christ. Your salvation is guaranteed through him. And all God asks of you is that you believe in this promise he has made to you. This simple truth is illogical to the world. People object. If you are truly forgiven all your sins, and salvation is yours just by believing that Jesus paid for your sins, there's nothing to keep you from doing whatever you want to do. Martin Luther had a great response to this objection. In part, he agreed. There is nothing to keep you from doing what you want when you live under the gospel. But the question is, when you truly believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, what do you want? What do you want to do if guilt has no power over you? Because you know only Jesus can pay the price for your sins. How often in life are your actions driven by guilt rather than love? Guilt is a cruel slave master which drives us to do things we don't want to do. And frequently it drives us to do things we know are wrong for us and wrong for others. The world understands the power of guilt. People are always using guilt to manipulate others for their own selfish purposes. The Christian truth revealed in Christ is that you can never solve the problem of guilt by your own actions or works. If you are trying to feel good about yourself by doing something, the truth taught in Scripture is that you can never do enough. Remember the last time someone used guilt to make you do something? Did you feel good afterwards? We believe, as Scripture teaches, that there is no work that can justify us. True righteousness, as Paul tells us in the letter to the Romans, comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. When you truly believe in what God has done with your guilt through Jesus, it gives you power to resist the world when someone is trying to use guilt to make you serve their own selfish purposes. But where are you going to hear this message? Where are you going to find people who encourage you to lay your guilt upon the cross of Jesus and start living as someone who is free from guilt, as you truly are because of Christ? A church where God's word is faithfully being taught is the only place you are going to hear about this good news. Of course, God serves us in many ways besides the forgiveness of our sins. Along with forgiveness, God promises us eternal life in heaven. Perhaps the best-known passage of Scripture speaks of this life. In John 3.16, Jesus tells us, For God so loved the world 
that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So, what do you want? When you know that eternal life is guaranteed to you through Christ, how do you live your life on earth when you know that your real home is in heaven? There is a difference between people who live with an eternal perspective versus people who live just for now. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Maybe you've heard the expression, you can't take it with you. Biblically speaking, this is true of most things in this world. Earthly riches, earthly glory, earthly strength, earthly power, None of these things go to heaven with you. But Jesus did talk about storing up treasures in heaven. What did he mean? When we help those burdened with guilt to believe in the forgiveness Jesus bought for us, when we comfort those who are fearful with the hope of eternal life that Jesus gained in his resurrection, when we offer to others the love that God has poured into our hearts. These can become treasures in heaven because we are helping others to believe in the saving hope that God offers us through Jesus. Because of the eternal life Jesus promises, Christians know that they don't have to focus on earthly glory or earthly wealth. Just like everyone else living in this sinful world, Christians will face problems and troubles. However, Christians not only have the eternal hope of salvation, but the knowledge that God will help us meet our earthly challenges. This God not only loves us, but understands our weaknesses, pains, and sufferings, because he has experienced it himself. Jesus also promises us that he will supply us with the things we need to carry out his mission on earth. When all the world is worried about the economy and jobs, the Christian is constantly reminded that God will take care. And this promise sets our hearts at ease when everything you hear in the news is doom and gloom. Jesus reminds us, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So, what do you want? When guilt has no power over you, when you know for certain that your future is safe in God's hands, when you know God will provide for your needs until the work he wants you to do on earth is done, what do you want when you have nothing to prove to anyone because you are certain of your own worth? You are so valued by God himself that he would sacrifice the life of his own son just to call you his child. Can you see how believing in the gospel can change the way you see yourself and see your life in this world? But where except church are you going to be reminded of these truths? The world is always going to be challenging the truth about you that is revealed in God's word. We need regular encouragement to keep on believing what God has told us about ourselves, for we are forgetful people. Ever go to the store to buy something and then return with several purchases except the one thing you went to the store to buy? You got distracted by the world. Have you ever wanted to say something important to someone else or ask an important question, but you got so involved in the conversation that you couldn't remember what point you were trying to make 
or what question you were trying to ask. You may know the basics of the Christian faith. You may be able to cite the doctrines. But just like an athlete, you need to keep reviewing them again and again. Each and every day, the world is telling you these basic Christian truths aren't real. Each and every day, you are being told you are not perfect. Your life is not complete. You don't have everything you need. And you better watch out for yourself because no one else will. Each and every day, the world is telling you, live for now because tomorrow may never come. The world wants you worried, dissatisfied with what you have, fearful and anxious. That's why we need to be in God's Word, to be refreshed with the assurances He offers us in the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper. That's why we need to go to church. This video was produced by Zion Lutheran Church of Hiawatha, Iowa part of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. We encourage you to become part of a Christian family where you can attend divine services and be served by God. Our worship services are at 6 p.m. on Saturday evenings and 8 and 10.30 on Sunday mornings. If you'd like more information about our congregation, please visit our website at www zionhiawatha.org